it's Dr. Manali. Today I'm going to be talking about what should your cholesterol be. Now it can be confusing because when you get your cholesterol lab report back, um, there's usually a range on the side and that range for your cholesterol may not be uh, appropriate for you. Um, what your cholesterol should be is based somewhat on your age and your risk factors and that's sort of a generic range for everybody is frequently. And so I'm going to talk about that today. This is based on the 2018 guidelines from the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. Now, the first thing you might be wondering is why do you even care what your cholesterol is? And like I've talked about before, this may be the only test you're getting to let us know is, are you at risk for forming blockages in the arteries of your heart? The other tests are things like a cardiac CT or coronary um, CT, and those involve radiation um, or a calcium score, and those involve radiation, and or a cardiac catheterization, which involves radiation and is an invasive test. These tests you're not normally going to get unless you have symptoms or risk factors or a reason to get these tests. Um, most younger, healthier people are really only going to get um, blood work like a cholesterol screen as well as um, checking your blood pressure. And so this may be one of the only tests you get to show if you're at risk of forming blockages on the arteries in the arteries of the heart. Even though it's not a perfect test, um, this is sort of the best test we have at the moment. So the first group of people is people who have an LDLC cholesterol greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter. If your LDLC cholesterol is greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter, and that is for American people, I will put um, the metric uh, measurements on the side in the text as well. Um, but if your LDLC cholesterol is greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter, uh, then that would be considered high. And at that point, we would recommend starting um, cholesterol lowering medication as well as making lifestyle changes. Now, because you start cholesterol lowering medication, that doesn't mean you don't also need to make lifestyle changes. Um, lifestyle changes means changing the way you eat and exercising, and if you're smoking, you should quit. Um, and you should still make those changes even if you are starting cholesterol lowering medications because these work in different ways. Diet, exercise, and cholesterol lowering medication um, affect your body differently. Although there's the same basic mechanism, um, they actually work differently to change your risk long term. So even if you start cholesterol lowering medication, you still need to change your diet and you still need to exercise those are far more effective um, than starting medication. So if you're very aggressive about um, your diet and lifestyle changes um, and exercise, then you could even potentially lower your cholesterol to the point that you don't need medication or you could um, take a lower dose of medication. So then the second group of people, um, it's broken down by age. So the next group of people are people who are 20 to 39 years old. If you're 20 to 39 years old and your LDLC cholesterol is greater than or equal to 160 milligrams per deciliter, that's considered high. And that's the point we recommend you make lifestyle changes. If you also have a family history of early onset heart disease, then that's a reason we may recommend you start cholesterol lowering medication. The third group of people are people who are 40 to 75 years old. If you're 40 to 75 years old, then ideally your LDLC cholesterol should be less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. Now I realize that's a big jump. If you're 38 or 39, it should be less than 160 milligrams per deciliter. But if you're 40 or 41, it should be less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. And that's a big jump, but that's where the guidelines are right now. And part of that is related to age. As you age, that becomes a risk factor in itself um, for your risk for developing heart disease in the future. So if you are 40 to 75 and your LDLC cholesterol is greater than 70 milligrams per deciliter, then we use a 10-year risk assessment calculator to calculate your risk of forming um, heart disease in the future, atherosclerotic heart disease. And you can Google it. This calculator is very easy to find. Uh, I think it's the first thing that comes up when you Google 10-year risk assessment. Um, but really, you should do this with the doctor um, so you know how to interpret the results of the calculator. And based on those results and the fact that you're not diabetic, now if you're diabetic, the, your risk changes because diabetes is a separate risk factor for forming heart disease. But if you're not diabetic, you're 40 to 75 years old, and your LDLC cholesterol is greater than 70 milligrams per deciliter, then um, this risk calculator will help us decide um, if you need to start cholesterol lowering medication or not, as well as you need to make lifestyle changes. Now, what do lifestyle changes mean exactly? Um, that means things like you quit smoking. I know it's hard, but um, really you should not be smoking. Um, that's very bad for your heart, among other things. Um, you exercise and you change your diet. You do have to change your diet. You can't just exercise your way out of heart disease. You also have to change the way you eat. Um, and uh, in a, 
it's actually, you know, really changing the way you eat is probably more important than exercise, although they're both important. Um, changing the way you eat means a plant-based diet. Now, I think a lot of people think plant-based diet means like veganism, but plant-based diet includes, um, it's sort of a catch-all term for diets that focus on fruits and vegetables. So that includes veganism, vegetarianism, but also Mediterranean diet, DASH diet, um, any diet that focuses on fruits and vegetables. Ideally, your plate is gonna be 50% fruits and vegetables um, for each meal that you're having. And so that's a plant-based diet. And that overall um, has probably been shown to work the best um, for helping prevent heart disease and lowering your cholesterol. Um, now that data changes regularly, but overall, um, so far I think the Mediterranean diet currently is the best diet, but it seems to change pretty regularly. So I'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> That's all for today. I didn't talk about HDL or triglycerides. Um, so if you'd like to know about that, let me know in the comments. Um, but this video was focusing on your LDLC cholesterol. That's all for now. For more science fact health and nutrition tips, you can follow me on Instagram, Healthy with Dr. Manali, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Manali Desai, or follow me on Twitter, Dr. Manali Desai. I'll see you next time.